And we are back on WGN TV Political Report, continuing our focus on the new 34th Ward, which will soon cover parts of the Loop, West Loop, Greek Town, and Little Italy. There are two candidates on the ballot. Now, we just introduced you to Bill Conway. And joining me now in the WGN studio is Jim Ascott, also in the running for Alderman of the 34th Ward. He's worked in real estate for more than 20 years, has served as president of the Chicago Association of Realtors, among other things. Jim, thanks for being with me. Oh, well, thank you, Paul. So but let's get people to uh, know you a little bit. Um, you uh, were an immigrant from Greece at age nine. You grew up, you went to Lane Tech across the street exactly. from WGN here, and real estate, your background. Talk a little bit about your background and what brought you here. Right, right. Uh, well, definitely when I immigrated uh, first to, with my family to, from Greece, uh, my father was in the restaurant business. And his first location was on Grand Park and Michigan, uh, no, sorry, uh, Michigan Avenue and, and Roosevelt Road at, at this Grand Park Hotel. So he had the restaurant on the first floor, and we stayed up in the hotel. It was terrific as a nine-year-old and playing in Grand Park. So that was my first experience of living in the city. And then uh, he, uh, his second restaurant was in the uh, Milwaukee Damon uh, North Avenue corridor, and that's where we moved in that neighborhood, the Wicker Park at the time. And from there, went to Lane Tech High School, and you know, and continue my education at Bradley University and on. And enter the world of real estate. Yes, yes. Well, at first, uh, I had a, a, a degree in psychology, and I worked at uh, as a therapist. My uh, my second job was at the Loretto Hospital in the emergency room doing crisis management. So that was my first experience. And uh, considering mental health was su such a big step as far as coming from from school and learning the that process. And spending seven years there, it seemed at that point they were losing funding for mental health. And, and it became very difficult uh, to continue to do the work. I would be interviewing people, looking to where they would go, and only having to deal with, with uh, institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, hospitalizing there, they're in for 48 hours and then out again, and back in the... In the so that'll be a concern. Yeah. Oh, and, absolutely. And then beyond that. Yeah. Well, you know, there were no care afterwards. So I kind of gave it up. I said, this is not going to be any help, and I'm, I, I, let me address it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so I got into real estate, and uh, back at started my own firm doing commercial real estate in that in the downtown area. First it was River North, and then there was yeah. the West, the Loop, and the West Loop. And doing different things. So the reason I wanted you to talk about the real estate is because obviously with different aldermen serving, we're always concerned about potential conflicts or areas of conflicts yeah, right. or appearances. So being in the real estate area, so much of what you would do would deal with zoning and licensing exactly. and all all of that exactly. any any possible conflicts that you see that could arise regarding your real estate work if I continue to work in it yes I mean definitely it's, a, it's something that I so you would not with. plan to no I, I plan to be the full-time alderman we have a succession plan my son will take over the company and and continue to do the, the business but for me it's going to be strictly being the alderman for the 34th ward and that's where I dedicate myself to do and now I guess I take you back because when you talked about the psychotherapy idea and all of that I know that one of your critical areas that you want to focus on is homelessness yes. and um, you talk about wanting to prevent and end it and you believe there's a lot of existing organizations you will enlist who can house these folks so talk about the homelessness plan. yes yes uh, it's definitely been it's one of the uh, points that people are concerned about in the 34th ward uh, as well as uh, where I live on the uh, uh, right at, in West Loop we have underneath uh, the Hubbard Bridge the Kenzie Bridge all those are tented and and we and we see that continuing to happen the, there's a budget uh, that this year is uh, for the 2023 of $200 million that should be applied toward homelessness, as well as what we had last year as well. But it doesn't seem to solve the problem. I think uh, we need to coordinate all those not-for-profits, 20 or so of them, that deal with homelessness and figure out how to all work together to get it solved. It's a critical issue, but of course, number one on many people's lists is the issue of crime uh, in the city. And, yeah. and you on your website talk about public safety yes. uh, and the fact that you think that the police budget is actually about a billion dollars short and that the district you live in the 12th district is short staffed if you were elected how do you change that well it, it's gonna have to take a look at the accountability factor and, and the superintendent uh, to have meetings with him it depends who it's gonna be the, the people running for mayor are saying well they'll fire the superintendent so we don't know who's gonna be in charge mm -hmm. and if, if they do change them I hope they go from the from the in, from our staff that's already in place that knows Chicago and, and the area but uh, I, th I think what's important is to look at possibilities for foot patrols. We need to have a presence on the street. Uh, right now we have cars with their lights going and they're sitting at the end of the block. Uh, one, one person uh, mentioned to me that it's like a scarecrow police officer there. It's not moving. It's uh, something that's not 
you know, not, not, not deterrent. So you want to see more cops on yeah. the street. Yeah. You also talk about infrastructure, replacing water lines, fixing the yeah. roads. But isn't the city already doing it? If we had a mayor here, what, you know, wouldn't the mayor say, we're doing that? Right. Well, we are. Out of the 39,000 lead pipes that need to be removed, we removed 200 over the last year. It, it's not going fast enough. We need to put our attention to it. I think that that's what's important. We are doing things, but we need to all be engaged and involved in how to move it forward. I also know you want to convert CTA buses to electric. All of this sounds very expensive, so exactly. where does the money come exactly. from? Well, you know, we need to replace some of, the, some of the fleet. They're old. There's a budget for replacing, so why not go to electric instead of buying the, the, the diesel or, or gasoline ones. You know, we, we just have to allocate the dollars in the right space. We have a budget uh, that was uh, when Rahm Emanuel left office in 2019, he had a budget of $10 billion seven. The, This budget of 2023 is $16 billion seven. What happened? We have $6 million more additionally into the budget, and, and now how are we allocating it? Where is this going? So these are the questions I think it's important for an alderman to ask and ask for that accountability and transparency. All right, and I'm glad we gave you an opportunity to talk about them here. Good luck on the campaign trail. That day will be here before you know it. <laughs> Jim Ascott, yes. thanks for being with me, and we're going to have one more break. We'll be back after this.